Hey there YouTube, it's Jeff Perry with Must Be Nice Investments. Welcome back today. Today we're kicking off a series on investment property financing. And today's video, we are gonna focus on three main things, uh, reserve requirements, loan to value ratios, and FICO scores, and how you can get up to 10 loans on single family properties. Single family property meaning any property that is one to four units, uh, five or more would be considered a multifamily. So stay tuned. We're about to jump right in it. So when I started investing, one of the first things I heard or research was, hey, you're gonna be hitting the wall at four houses. That's all you can own. That's all the government will allow. But that's simply just not true. Currently, 10 houses is what you can have on government-backed mortgages uh, that are purchased up through Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac. And I'm here to tell you today how we can take those loans uh, and get the right reserve requirement because they are going to have some re requirements there loan to value ratios and of course your credit is always going to be super important when you go to start looking at getting multiple loans on income producing property so let's jump right in uh, when we look at uh, reserve requirements for Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac they kind of break this into three different tiers people who own one to four properties which also include your primary residence people who own uh, five and six properties and then people who own seven to ten properties so if you own one to four properties or plan on purchasing a third or fourth property, etc., with Fannie Mae, you're going to be required to have six months of principal and interest, taxes and insurance on the subject property that you're purchasing. And then you're going to also need to have 2% of all other remaining investment property mortgages uh, available. The rules for Freddie Mac are that you're going to need six months of PITI on the subject property. And then you're going to need two months of PIT, P, PITI on any other owned investment properties, excluding your uh, per primary residence. So when we let's just jump into an example real quick of this. So here is an example of having four mortgages. You got three houses here that you currently own. You're going for that fourth in the bottom right, the subject there. On the three houses uh, that you're going to need to have. The remaining mortgage these are just hypothetical situations but if house one if your remaining mortgage balance was eighty nine thousand dollars you're going to multiply that by two percent to get 17 18 that is one of the cash reserves you're going to need same thing with the second and third houses those remaining mortgages we're multiplying that by 0 0.02 which is two percent to come up with that number finally the house that you're purchasing you're going to need six months of principal interest taxes and insurance uh, and we're gonna, in this case, I just hypothetically said, hey, it's, it's a $920 PITI. We're gonna multiply six times 920 to get 5520. 55, so for a total Fannie Mae reserve requirement to purchase this final, this final property would be $11,798. And this cash reserve requirement is on top of the cash you're gonna need for a down payment on that subject property the cash you're gonna to need to run uh, an appraisal or a survey or anything else that is gonna be associated with closing your loan. This cash requirement is gonna be, uh, or this cash reserve is gonna be a requirement by Fannie Mae. Okay, taking a look at the Freddie Mac reserve requirement, a little bit different here. What they're gonna require on uh, your non-subject properties is two months of PITI uh, and then six months on the subject property for your uh, cash reserve requirement. So, in this case, you can see, and these are just made up uh, PITIs, but something that would probably make sense based on uh, the remaining mortgage balances that I showed on the uh, previous slide. So 550 times two is 1100, 615 times two, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, all in all, when we add in the 5520 on the subject where we're gonna need six months of PITI, our Freddie Mac reserve requirement would be $9,070, which is a little bit, you know, a little bit less than the Fannie Mae. Uh, and that may not always be the case. In this hypothetical situation, it, it turned out to be, but they're always gonna be pretty close together. Okay, as we add properties to our portfolio, we get into the five, six property range. Uh, the requirements are gonna change just a little bit. Uh, with Fannie Mae, actually it's pretty substantial because we're gonna still require six months of principal interest taxes and insurance on the subject property that we're purchasing. But then we're moving up to a 4% uh, payment factor on all of our other mortgages there. So that's a double price increase there. When we look at Freddie Mac, uh, still just six months PI on the subject property and then two months PITI on all other owned investment properties. So not really a big change there, just adding uh, the couple properties if we go up to six. 
So let's look at an example of how this plays out. Now, when we look at Fannie Mae, uh, we got remaining mortgages here. You add up to all these six mortgages. If you added them all up and just basically multiplied by 4%, uh, you're going to get what you're going to owe and then plus your six months PITI. In this case, when we add that 4%, it's going to be a pretty substantial number. So all in, if we were going to buy this subject property in the bottom right, we would be up to $25,510 in cash reserves after we close the loan. And taking a look at the same example with the Freddie Mae loan, uh, if we're just doing two months PITI, and again, these are hypothetical, but I think they kind of trend well with the, the previous slide. Um, all in with this, we're only gonna be spending 11,000, or only gonna have to have cash reserves of 11,200, including the six months PITI on the subject property. So a pretty substantial difference between Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae when it comes to reserve requirements once you get into the five to 10 property range. When we move into the seven to 10 property range, not a lot changes on the Freddie Mac side. They're still requiring two months of PITI on every property, including the subject, uh, or six months on the subject property. But if we look at how uh, Fannie Mae does it, they're gonna take that number from two, 4%, all the way up to 6% on that seven to 10 properties. So your reserve requirement for a Fannie Mae loan is gonna be substantially higher than it would be for a Freddie Mac. So when you go to your mortgage broker and you're into multiple properties, you get into five plus properties, really understand what that reserve requirement is before you start making offers on houses and who your bank is gonna do business with and how you're gonna close these loans. So next let's talk about the uh, minimum loan to value ratio required by Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. With both of these, you're gonna be required to put anywhere from 15 to 20% down. Uh, if it's a multifamily property, meaning one to four unit property, not a true multifamily, but one to four, then you may have to go up to 25%. But for the most part, most people put down 20% to avoid uh, private mortgage insurance. If you want to pay private mortgage insurance or if you just don't have quite have the 20%, you can get away with a 15% down, but you are gonna owe PMI. Finally, let's talk about uh, minimum FICO requirements. Uh, this probably isn't an issue for most people who are looking to buy uh, investment real estate. It's kind of a given that you're going to need to have good credit. Uh, but I think you may be surprised at how low uh, some of these minimum FICO scores could be for you to qualify for investment real estate. With Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, both uh, one to six properties, you're going to need at least a 650 FICO score recommended in the 720 range or plus, 720 plus. Uh, with seven to 10 properties, a minimum FICO score is 720. You really need to be in the high 700s, most likely though, uh, with most lenders. So those are the requirements there. There's a few more that we're gonna go over in some subsequent videos. I appreciate you tuning in today. I know it's a lot. If you have any questions on, especially on reserve requirements, cash reserve requirements, hit me down uh, in the comments section below and please subscribe for more videos in this series.